For many years, GIS remained relatively the same. Software and processes to make use of geospatial data didn't really experience any major disruption or changes. But somewhere along the way, things started to change. And as the world changed, GIS started to change too. New tools, new libraries, and entire applications were built on these new things that were being created. This was innovated. These new tools could be used by anyone, anywhere, from your computer, all the way up to massive GIS implementations in the cloud. And they could all support the massive increase in geospatial data that's being generated today. And now, I believe we're starting to see a new era of GIS start to emerge. One that is fundamentally different from the past, modern GIS. This goes beyond just changes in innovation and technology. It's a core change in the way we use GIS technology and will impact the way we practice, learn, and ultimately deliver value from GIS. So what is modern GIS? What makes it different? Why does this matter? And how do we start to use it? Let's jump in. Since its inception, GIS technology has remained relatively the same. You generally have some sort of application layer such as a desktop system or programmatic access like from Python code or even from the command line. Then you have to have somewhere to store your data. This could be a database or server architecture and maybe some place to store your files as well. Web map services or tiled web maps ultimately come along later but have be also become an integral part of the GIS stack. Lastly, you also have tools that allow you to gain access to outside data or outside tools like geocoding or routing analysis that also pull from data from outside your organization. And finally is the outputs that come from all these systems. Traditionally, this may have been printed maps or published data sources, but has grown now to include many other things such as applications, dashboards, notebooks, and even more. And this traditional architecture probably looks similar to the one that we showed earlier. So what is the difference between GIS and modern GIS and what are the factors driving this change? First, let's start with the latter, taking a look at the factors that are driving the changes for modern GIS. There are ultimately three big changes that have shaped the need for modern GIS. First, geospatial data has grown in scale and velocity. Larger volumes of data are being produced and being produced more frequently. Now, of course, this is not just a trend in geospatial. You can take a look at this chart which shows data growth worldwide year over year. Now, while these exact data points don't exist for geospatial specific data, there's a few data points that we can pull on to understand the growth of geospatial data itself. First, here's a post that I've shared that looks at some of the largest geospatial data sets I've come across in my career. But take a look at all these other responses. There's so many people using much larger scales of geospatial data than ever before. And just take a look at the size of the data set from Google Earth. This may very well be the largest single geospatial data set available today. There's no doubt that the scale and volume of geospatial data is growing rapidly, and that defines the first need for modern GIS. The second is technology. The innovations for technology for large-scale data analytics and data science has been significant. Within the past decade plus, there have been major advancements in leveraging analytics for much larger data. Over time, these tools have become much more easy to use and accessible to wider groups of people. And we're actually starting to see the emergence of geospatial specific types of these tools, for example, Apache Sedona. But the tough part is that if you don't have the relevant experience to use or implement these tools, they can be a bit out of reach. This is the worst. <laughs> To best take advantage of these tools, oftentimes you need some DevOps skills or developer operations to first implement them, and then skills like Spatial SQL or Python to actually use them. And many times in a traditional GIS education, these skills aren't taught, especially in the early stages or oftentimes even in the later stages of a GIS education. Finally, our last trend is the growth of the cloud. Beyond using the cloud just for data storage or deploying applications, more and more cloud providers are deploying open source technologies as services that they provide that ease the burden for others using them to deploy and maintain these services on their own. The cloud takes much of the burden of the application for things like backups, security, and deployment, and allows you to just use the tool itself. On the flip side, traditional GIS has often been desktop first. They're usually backed up by services and servers that are hosted on site or proprietary data servers that are hosted in the cloud. But as a user or even an administrator of these services, you often have little fine grain and control about how you use and maintain these services. These new changes have really driven the need for modern GIS, one that isn't owned by any one person or organization, but one that is accessible and open, scalable and performant to solve the new problems of spatial analysis today. So what is modern GIS and ultimately how is it different from traditional GIS? Modern GIS is the process, systems, and technology used to derive insights from geospatial data. Modern GIS uses open, interoperable, and standards-based technology. 
It can be run locally or in the cloud and can scale to work with many different types, velocities, and scales of data. Take a look at this chart. Here's a quick comparison between the two and what you can achieve with a modern GIS versus a traditional GIS system. Ultimately, there are six core pillars that define modern GIS. The first is that modern GIS uses open and standards-based technology. It uses tools that follow standard-based languages and tools that integrate with each other. They're open and accessible, meaning that when enabled with the proper training and knowledge, anyone can ultimately use them. Second is that modern GIS uses interoperable tools and languages. Traditional GIS often relies on proprietary tools, and while it often provides libraries to access these tools, they're really just a method to access those same underlying proprietary systems. Modern GIS is built on the principle of using open and interoperable languages and tools that can be used as standalone tools or integrated to work alongside each other. The most important part of this is that it means that GIS teams can now work along other analyst teams that may not be using or work with geospatial data. This completely removes the silos of the past, where people using GIS had to work within their systems and tools, and others had to work within their systems and tools. For the first time, everyone can collaborate with the same tools, languages, and standards. Third is that modern GIS is completely scalable from your local machine all the way up to massive cloud infrastructure. You gain the complete advantages that modern GIS provides running these tools on your local computer and sometimes even without internet access. The scalability is also very important here. While you can scale to a certain amount on your computer, certainly much larger than traditional GIS systems, the scalability in the cloud is almost limitless. Fourth is that modern GIS supports all sizes, scales, and velocities of data. You can work with any type or format of data and data that comes in much larger volumes, whether that be in the number of rows, complexity of features, or the number of features that are being generated over time. Fifth is that modern GIS supports new geospatial career paths that are being created within the field today. Geospatial data engineers, geospatial developers, cloud architects, spatial data scientists, GIS analysts, and more can all benefit from these tools. And only with the support of a true multifaceted team can we really begin to tap into the potential of modern GIS. No more are the days where someone working in GIS has to maintain systems architecture, manage data, manage backups, do the analysis, deliver the analysis, and basically be a one-stop one shop for all things geospatial. The sixth and final point is that there is no single output of modern GIS. A deliverable can be just about anything. Here's a list of some of the things that I've seen created with modern GIS, and I'm sure there are many more. And with more versatile and diverse outputs, modern GIS can serve and integrate into many more parts of your organization. Now, I also wanna take a minute to call out what isn't modern GIS. Simply saying that modern GIS is GIS on the web or connecting your data to a central cloud data store doesn't go far enough. Just go home. No! Just go home. No! No! Without incorporating all the pieces we've been talking about, modern GIS cannot be achieved. In short, simply saying modern GIS is web GIS will inhibit the growth of the field, and as we will see, the growth of the individuals in the field as well. So why is modern GIS important right now? As I mentioned earlier, the more we keep modern GIS in a silo, the less collaboration that we can have with other fields and individuals, and more importantly, the more we will keep ourselves in the corner. The job market is also changing. More roles are requiring technical skills, both inside and outside of GIS. Take a look at this data, which represents one month of job listings pulled from Google via the SERP API. And special thanks to Luke Barus, who put together this code and project for his analysis of the skills needed for a data analyst role. What up, data nerds? As you can see, more and more Python and SQL are becoming necessary skills within geospatial. And only with skills like these can we start to break down the barriers between the geospatial and non-geospatial fields. If we continue to educate those going into the field to execute clicks and not code, we are only gonna set ourselves back further. If you have different programming skills and different ways to show how you use those programming skills and practical examples, the more likely you can have a higher salary. These data points you're seeing here are from February 2023 for jobs in the United States. But as you can see, between GIS and similar non-GIS roles, there is consistently a pretty sizable salary gap. So what do we do and what needs to change to help bring modern GIS to everyone? The first is education. We need GIS programs to teach modern GIS skills as a core part of their curriculums. As a best estimate, Kurt Menke found that 95% of college programs are using mostly or all proprietary tools to teach GIS. I recently attended a seminar where I heard this reiterated. The presenter said that geospatial or GIS education should really focus on the theory and that software providers will provide the tools to actually execute that theory. 
and I also experienced this firsthand. When I left my undergraduate geography program, most of my training was on proprietary tools. I had some very basic programming skills that are completely defunct today. I had to learn modern GIS skills from different tutorials, websites, courses, and colleagues just to help myself get ahead. But once I did, it made all the difference in my career trajectory. We really need to be teaching job-ready skills, whereas today most of the skills in a modern GIS system are actually learned on the job. We actually found this very clearly laid out in the data in our State of Spatial SQL and our Spatial Data Science report. If employers are demanding more of these skills, and these skills also come with a higher salary, why wouldn't we include this as a core part of a geospatial education? And more often than not, when these skills are taught in a GIS education, they're treated as advanced skills and taught later in the program or even not at all. We should be treating modern GIS skills as fundamental and prepare everyone coming from a geospatial education to fit into the job skills that are demanded today. We also need to be enabling those that are already within career paths in the geospatial space. There are so many skilled individuals already within GIS careers that have been working and providing value with the work they've been doing for years. It's really important that we provide and enable those already within those careers with the resources, tools, books, and courses to learn and implement these modern GIS skills in the work they're already doing today. And the good news is there's a few ways that we can already do this. There's bountiful information that already exists in different corners of the internet and courses, tutorials, and lots of different places. But the problem is there's no one clear path for how to get there. And this is one of the first major roadblocks in learning modern GIS. I put together some videos on my favorite courses for learning geospatial Python, and my favorite paths are different steps to actually learn modern GIS. You can take a look at those in the links here. I also think it's incredibly important that we share knowledge as a community. Throughout my career, I have always benefited from the knowledge and information from colleagues and other individuals working in GIS or geospatial. Up to this point, a lot of this information and knowledge has been distributed in different pockets with individuals or organizations that know different parts of modern GIS. The more we can share it and expose it, the more others can start to use it on their own. The other thing I highly recommend is just to start using these tools. You don't have to change everything all at once. But start with one or two of these different tools and implement them for a specific project. See how they work, see where they don't work, and use them again to speed up your work and use a modern GIS system. Understanding how these tools can be applicable to the work you're already doing is one of the fastest ways that you can practice modern GIS in the field. Finally, make sure you talk about modern GIS. How are you using it? What do you find challenging? Who do you turn to when you have questions? What are your favorite tools? The geospatial community is one of the most active and amazing global groups that I'm really happy to be a part of. I've never encountered anyone who is unwilling to help or even answer a simple question. Jump in, share your ideas, and start the conversation. I know that modern GIS can be a complete game changer, and I'm so excited to see the new world that this creates. I know there's gonna be so much opportunity for different individuals, and also for the problems that we can actually solve together. But I wanna hear from you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What are you focused on learning? What are some of the tools that you like to use? What are some roadblocks you might have had? And ultimately, how do you plan to use modern JS in the work that you're doing? Let me know so we can share and all learn together. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.